Hi, welcome to the All Hazards Consortium. My name is Tom Moran, and I serve as the executive director for this amazingly nimble and innovative organization that was started by states on the East Coast, as well as the private sector, to focus on multi-state regional issues, originally on disaster management, but it's evolved in now into much, much more. Over the years, the consortium has developed a sensitive information sharing environment, or the SICE, which provides a legal policy process and technology framework that allows companies, regulated and non-regulated, to come together with states and federal agencies in small working groups, large working groups, whatever, to identify common issues and jointly develop short, mid, and long-term solutions to these issues by leveraging each other's efforts, investments, policies, practices, whatever, and really designed to get restoration done to critical infrastructure, to expedite power restoration and supply line, all the things that get damaged during disasters and disruptions. It's amazing to watch this work. So our board members and working group members get asked all the time, so what does the AHC do? So the AHC sits in the middle between these various types of organizations. On the left, you have the federal government, and the state government, and within each of those agencies, you've got law enforcement, emergency management, you've got executive branch, you've got transportation, you've got a variety of different agencies within the government organizations. On the right, you've got the private sector. You've got the critical infrastructure owners and operators, your utilities, transportation companies, things like that. And then you've got the private sector solution providers, the trade associations. They all kind of come together when it hits the fan to try to help address some of these issues at the local level and regional and national levels sometimes as well. So what the consortium does through its SICE framework, it allows the working groups to form to work on common issues and produce operational solutions. The consortium's role is very simple. It's to stay out of the way. It's to provide a convening authority that is trusted, that provides legal protection, that helps protect the information, that vets the identities of the participants, and it's really focused on doing one thing. It's designed to produce operational results. That's how the consortium measures its effectiveness. Not by the amount of paper or meetings it has, but what products are being produced, what policies are being produced that actually address real world problems. So the big idea here is to work on an issue, solve it, get a short, mid or long term solution moving on it so that it doesn't have to be addressed again in the future. So the role of the consortium is really to serve as this neutral broker to facilitate the planning, the exercise, the training and so forth to address these complex issues that are too big for any one organization to address. That's what the consortium does, is to facilitate that process. So the stakeholders involved in the consortium vary across different parts of government and industry. This slide gives you an indication of the types of organizations that are involved, the sectors that are involved, some of the job titles that are involved in our working groups and the federal government agencies. This can be operational agencies, it can be research and development agencies, it really doesn't matter. The idea here is it's very diverse and it leverages people's time, their perspectives, their investments, and we find more and more that you don't have to recreate the wheel. There's things already out there. You just have to know about them. So by breaking down some of these silos, you find these incredible people with incredible perspective and talent that have already made investments, that already have products that can be utilized or tweaked or merged with other products, and then bring it all together into one place where people can come to get it. That's what the consortium stakeholders do, is to aggregate each other's work, bring it into one place so they can move quicker and faster during incidents and disasters. So the power of the consortium is really the people that participate in these working groups. Over the last 10 years, the consortium has started many different working groups. Some sustain over the long haul, some solve the problem they were formed to address, and then they, they kind of dissipate out. Currently, the consortium operates four working groups that really are doing the bulk of the work today in regards to disaster management, situation awareness, and research transition. So there are two that are government guided. One is called the East Coast Corridor Coalition. That is made up of government, state, and local representatives that look at operational issues around the region and really around the country. Another group is called the Mackinac, the Mid-Atlantic Consortium for Interoperable Communications. This has really been focused on a lot of um, public safety communications issues. It's still together. It's made up of a bunch of states working on common things like FirstNet and policy and technology that helps move public safety comms and FirstNet forward. Then we have two industry-guided work groups. One is called the Multi-State Fleet Response Working Group. This was formed right after Sandy. This is comprised of a number of different sectors, electric, food, fuel, telecom, water, transportation, communications. And it works on issues related to fleet movement and information sharing during disasters. 
very, very important. And it has a number of different issues it's working on, probably over 50. And they develop a short, mid, and long-term solution for each one. And it's just ever going. It's just ongoing. But that working group is national. It's run heavily by the electric sector. Uh, but we have lots of participation from other sectors that benefit from that work. And then a new working group was formed in 2015 called the Sensitive Information Sharing Work Group. This is driven by the private sector, but public sector participates, and its objective is to drive this data-driven decision-making initiative forward. How can we expedite information flow to the right vetted people so that we can get decisions made in 30 seconds and not recreate the same issues with every disaster that's being faced? So the SICE Working Group looks at identifying common operating problems. They develop use cases from that. Then working with the federal partners, they find data sets, tools, apps, websites, things that are already out there, bring them together into one place and allow people to access that information, those apps or websites, in order to solve their operational issues based on the demand that, for that issue. So over time, you'll see the SICE Working Group is developing a thing called a disaster app store, right, called One Stop Ops. It'll be a new service designed to centralize dozens and dozens and dozens of other people's work into one place where during a disaster of any kind, you can come to one place, get the information you need, and over time, this app store will grow to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of apps because it's not designed to create, it's designed to aggregate and package and, and, and align with specific operational needs for our members' issues. And lastly, each working group provides a planning function, and we call it the integrated planning framework. So our working groups are comprised of public and private sector members, many of them. So for example, the Fleet Response Working Group serves as kind of a integration gear that connects the regional private sector activities during an incident with the government or public sector activities. So these two working groups, the EC3 and the Fleet Working Group, work together, jointly plan and jointly exercise. And so when something happens, like a hurricane or an accident or a terrorist attack or something like that, as these information sharing networks ramp up, these two working groups provide liaisons to each of their respective communities. So this breaks down the silos very quickly. It gets access to information you normally don't see, and it flows very quickly. And so what this designed to do is to provide unity of effort between government and the private sector. And it's been proven over and over and over again. It spits out products, policies, technologies. It leverages solutions already developed in other parts of the country into a current, a current environment. It's a fantastic model. And it's driven by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of volunteers that work on it. They're just passionate about the same thing. Let's fix the problem facing us, whether we're in banking, whether we're in communications or transportation or fuel or food or electric. All these organizations need to share information together on different subjects at different times. So the integrated planning framework that's designed by the consortium that's used by its working groups is what makes the magic happen. So if you're new to the consortium, you won't really notice this, but if you've been around for a while, we're redesigning our website. We've tried to streamline things and simplify things going forward. So down at the bottom, you'll see how to navigate the web page. Some of these links are active and some are not. We'll be updating those over time. And we'll be introducing some new parts to the website as well. The big idea here is we want to streamline information. We want to be able to find out what your needs are and route you quickly to our dozens and dozens and dozens of products that will help you figure out how best to know what's going on, to know who's doing what, and to get the information you need to get. So we want to thank you for visiting our webpage. Uh, visit back frequently as we'll make updates on a number of different areas, including cybersecurity, information sharing with drones and operational use, identity vetting, disaster management, supply chain movement and restoration, a number of different topics we're undertaking, especially in the areas of cyber. Uh, we'll see a lot of information going on with blockchain technology, user identity management and vetting, a number of things going on there, all focused to do one thing, help people share information quicker and more reliably and more safely. So thanks again for visiting our website, and we hope the consortium can bring you the same value that it's brought over 16,000 of its stakeholders across the nation.